everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Let's go to get out your King James Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 11. I guess we're going to start from verse 1. This is part, oh, I forget now, part 4, I think, of the wisdom and knowledge and understanding I think it's part four, but this is going to be the last one, I'm sure. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go, and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Now raiment's clothing, people. A man clothed in soft raiment, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. See, this is what I love about the King James. If you didn't know what raiment was, it says, A man clothed in soft raiment, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea. I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. And that's in the book of Isaiah. Verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, or Elijah, which was for to come. See, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elias, or Elijah. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man, which is Christ, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. In other words, they're saying he's a drunken pig, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. But wisdom is justified of her children. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 12. I guess we're going to read quite a bit of it. Verse 1. At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, Thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Oh, yeah. 
But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Isn't Christ greater than the temple? I say he is. Verse 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, Will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. The Pharisees, not the Romans. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, or Isaiah, saying, verse 18, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Now, that word Gentiles is the same word as the nations. Same word. What nations? I believe the nations of Israel. Verse 19. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles, or nations, trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed of a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, so, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So here it is, they're accusing Jesus of being demon-possessed and casting out the devils by the power of Beelzebub, which is the prince of the devils, right? 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But... If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost 
shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You see, they were accusing Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit of casting out devils by the power of devil. So they're basically saying the Holy Spirit is of Satan. That's what the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And people, let me tell you something. They teach this in the sin of Gogs every time they speak of Jesus, which they don't call him by that name. They call him Yeshu, which means may his name be blotted out from under heaven. Verse 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. There's a parallel account of this in Mark 3. So let's skip around and uh, we'll take a look. Um, verse 22, Mark 3:22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Um, and then uh, let's skip to verse 28. Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith whosoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. See, that's the interpretation of exactly what's going on here. All right, let's go to uh, back to Matthew 12, verse 38. We'll keep reading. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Uh, Jonah, Jonah and the whale, right? For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now I did a study on this. Uh, Abraham's bosom. Christ went to Abraham's bosom for three days and three nights to preach to all the Old Testament saints before they went to heaven. You know, Adam was there, Eve was there, uh, King David was there, Solomon was there, I'm sure. Uh, all the Old Testament prophets were there. Elisha, Samuel, yeah, Christ had to tell them because there is no salvation by law, contrary to what certain groups in the Middle East will tell you. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear 
the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. And when he, Jesus, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogues, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom? You know, where did this man get this wisdom from? Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? You know, all these miracles. Verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Uh, I guess we'll go to, oh, I don't know. Let's see. I guess we'll read Luke chapter 1.1. 1, 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in those days, there was in those days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was uh, of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, Zechariah was a Levite of, of the priest tribe, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. She was also of the tribe of Levi. Aaron was the brother of Moses. They were the of both of Levi. Levi was the priest tribe that served the Lord. Now, uh, and her name was Elizabeth. Verse 6, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. You know, if I was praying and doing something and I saw an angel, I'd probably be pretty scared too. Verse 13, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. This is going to be John the Baptist, people. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to their to the Lord their God, 
And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Now there's a difference between asking a question and saying, uh, basically saying, man, this is impossible. I'm an old guy, and my wife's too old. Don't you know she's in menopause? She can't have children. That's basically what he's saying here. Verse 19, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he de departed for his own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And... Uh, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what matter of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt Conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? No, no. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, the name that devils tremble at. Verse 32. He shall be great and should be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Or as the Marines would say, Booyah! In Luke chapter 2 verse 40, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. All right, let's go to verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. You know why it doesn't say his father and his mother? Because Joseph wasn't his father. But some of the Bibles, new Bibles, say his father and his mother knew not of it. Subtle change, but it has theological implications. Verse 44. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. 
And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Uh, we're not talking about medical doctors. We're talking about doctors of the law. You know, like uh, uh, theological doctors of theology. Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all those, all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Amen to that. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 11. Jesus is uh, talking to the lawyers. Now, these are doctors of the law, the laws of God. You know, the, the Bible has religious laws and civil criminal laws. So these are people that know the laws of God, the laws of Moses, uh, found in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Verse 46, And he, Jesus, and he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens, grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. You ever heard that? Oh yeah, he makes other people work hard, but you know, he won't even you know, lift it with his little finger. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets. That's the graves, people. The sepulchres are graves. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed, they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, Therefore also said the wisdom of God. I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered it not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. In Romans 11.33 we read, O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen to that. 
All right, in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30, we read, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Oh, yeah. 1 Corinthians 2, 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. All right, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Wow. Uh, that's incredible, isn't it? But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men, man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And you know what? If Satan and the, uh, his minions would have known uh, <laughs> that crucifying Christ would redeem the world, they never would have done it. Verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. All right, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Doesn't mean you're stupid. It, being ignorant means you just, you're, you don't know something. When it comes to brain surgery and rocket science, I'm ignorant. Uh... And by the way, people, everybody that is a true believer, born again of the Spirit, has a spiritual gift. It would behoove you to find out what that gift is and try to use it. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. 
Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. In other words, you got a tongue, you got an ear, you got an eye, you got feet, hands. You know, different parts of the body do different things, but it's still part of the one body. That's the point Paul's making here. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God hath set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are there, but now are they many members, yet but one body. So, think about that. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon those we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, and that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Uh, you notice tongues is the last on that list. First, prophets. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. I believe I'm a teacher. Uh, somebody sent a note to the Pentecostals telling them that... Uh, Miracles and healings are better than speaking gibberish that nobody understands, please. Verse 29. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. People, the best gifts is not tongues. Tongues is the last gift. You know, the gifts of miracles and healings are uh, before it. So what can I tell you? All right, in Re uh, Ephesians 1.17, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, 
the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Ephesians 3.10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Colossians 1.9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. All right, let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, for though I be absent in the flesh, Yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. All right, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Uh, and then there's James chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, James had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. He grew up with a guy named Jesus. So maybe we should listen to this guy. He says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. In James 3.17, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Uh, in 2 Peter chapter 3, boy, I tell you, people hate this. People hate this because it acknowledges Paul as an apostle. And a lot of these Hebrew roots people, they don't like Paul. Of course, they don't like Jesus who sent Paul. They love Yeshua, whoever that might be. Personally, I think Yeshua is going to end up being the name of the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast. But that's just my opinion. 2 Peter 3.15, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. All right. All right, let's take a look at the book of Revelation. Uh, we read in Revelation 13, 18 about here is wisdom. Let he, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. See, that's wisdom, six six six. And then there's people who say, oh no, it's not six six six. It's uh, they, and they come up with some other thing, telling you always, well, you know, the King James was mistranslated, blah blah blah. You know what? Run away from those people. They're idiots. All right, so, Revelation 5, 12, we're getting ready to close this out. And the angel saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches 
and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Who's the Lamb? Jesus Christ. And Revelation 7.12 saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Well, this is the end of the uh, Knowledge and Wisdom series. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, slain before the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.